If you haven't seen that movie, that's a great movie. Ron's Gone Wrong, is that what it's called? Uh, so here's the thing about being a friend. You know, you can't really love people unless you care about them. And there's really two things that get in our heads sometimes, and it's me, mine. Um, and the Bible talks about that quite a bit. And so today I want to encourage us to get our focus off of one thing or another. Let me, let me give you an explanation. So when I was in the hospital, they had me attached to a wall and, of course, a pole with all kind of stuff on it and all kind of stuff. You remember that. It wasn't that long ago, right, for you? And, uh, and then this evil person walks in. Do, do you know the evil person that comes in after surgery? You know who it is? Not the nurse. They're nice. They're nice, yes. Physical therapist. Satan spawn. <laughs> so they come in and they said, we want you to walk. And I said very simply, how? I said, I'm attached to all this stuff. The next thing I know, she is clothes pinning or diaper pinning stuff to my skirt. They give you a skirt with an open back. It's so nice. I always ask for two, by the way, a little tip for you. You just be Superman in the, in the hallways. It's great. So I walked the halls, and she made me walk the halls. And let me tell you why. Because as evil as I thought she was, the truth was, she cared about me getting better. And in life, sometimes, God lets us deal with the mine and the me, because we think, hey, jealousy is going to make me happy. Anger is going to make me happy. Revenge is going to make me happy. Gossip is going to make me happy. More stuff is going to make me happy. Thinking about me and my needs all the time is going to make me happy. And what we don't recognize is God allows that because what happens over time is you will get more and more and more selfish and miserable. God did not create you to only think about you. That's one of the reasons in Genesis it says, it's not good for man to be alone. What does that mean? Is it just talking about spouses? Nay, nay. Just like God always had the Trinity. By the way, you see we uh, in the first chapter of Genesis describing the Trinity. And yet, he says, it's not good. We need each other. But the danger is when we're hurt, and like when I was in the hospital, let me, let me tell you what happens when you're in the hospital. I woke up in so much pain, because apparently I'm a drug, drug addict, and drugs don't work on me. And I woke up with the worst, I mean, I've had PTSD ever since from the pain. I literally remember laying there, and if anybody touched me, my entire abdomen would lock up, and I would yell. All kinds of things pastors shouldn't yell, Okay. <laughs> And then I would apologize for yelling, and I said, I, and they said, breathe through it. I said, how can I breathe through it when I don't know it's coming? Right? And so I'm, you know, I'm a lot of fun. And uh, maybe that's why I didn't see the same nurses every day. Every day I had a different nurse. They're like, you take him today. I don't take him. Anyway, so, so, but here's the thing. When you're hurt, life becomes about you if you're not careful. And, and let me tell you the problem with this. Is when you're hurt... And you turn in, and listen, you got to take care of you. I get all that. You need your me time and your foot massage or whatever you people do. Crazy people. Can't stand when people touch my feet. I went and did a foot washing ceremony at a church. I ruined the whole thing. I laughed through the whole thing. Anyway, so I'm not on drugs, by the way. This is just how I am. If you don't know me, this is just, I didn't even have Tylenol today. Uh, anyway, so... Um, but if you're not careful when you're somewhere like the hospital or if you're dealing with a trauma or a death or IRS calls you <laughs> or the doctor says, oh, we got to go over these tests. If you're not careful, you suddenly turn inward and all you think about is mine, me, mine. And you think it's going to help you. But what it does is it really makes you more miserable. You, you begin to forget about your blessings. You forget what God has done for you. And so today I want to talk about this idea of, of really two things. And, and it's really coming from one scripture. But we're going to look at two different uh, uh, passages of scripture. Very practical lessons from the Bible. But mainly Philippians 2, these verses that we're going to talk about. will go to this idea of focus equals where my life is headed. Now, you would never drive your car hopefully, looking in the rearview mirror, okay? 
That would be a really dumb thing. Now, if you're looking forward and glancing at the mirror, that's okay. And I would say that's your life. You need to be able to look outside of yourself. It doesn't mean you don't look in the mirror. It doesn't mean you don't evaluate what's going on. But you can't look at yourself all the time and grow in godliness and joy. Number one, mine. How can I get more? And jealousy. In Philippians 2, 3 through 5, it says this, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility... By the way, this word for humility, if you study it, Greeks hated this word. Josephus used this word as a negative connotation. The idea that you don't think you are the best. You're the greatest. You're the Muhammad Ali. You don't even know who that is. Uh, uh, Every once in a while I use an illustration and I realize I'm showing my age. Muhammad Ali. They're like, who is that? Even Michael Jordan's becoming an outdated. Hirsch, back in the old days. By the way, happy birthday. So Josephus, though, considered it a bad word. Humility, the Greeks and the Romans both considered humility bad. But Paul here says to us, hey, listen, in humility, what do you do? Value others above yourself. Now, that doesn't mean that you look not at your own interests at all. Listen to what it says. Look, not looking to your own interests, and in the original, it's, it's not just looking to your own interests. You have to take care of you, right? If you're on an airplane, what do they tell you about the masks, right? Put them on your kid first, and then you can pass out. No, put it on you first, and then whoever's with you. So, so here's the deal, looking not to your own interests, but each of you to the interest of others. And then it says this. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. I love this. Humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. Now, if you're struggling right now with being depressed or discouraged, I'm going to give you a very simple thing you can do to feel better. Watch panda videos. Baby panda videos. You talk about selfish and self-centered. If you don't know what selfish and self-centered is, you watch a baby panda video. This, this one video I saw this week, and this is what we do while we're in the hospital, uh, is a baby panda, uh, three baby pandas, and the lady is trying to clean up their cage. And as she's trying to clean up their cage, they grab her rake. And then the other one sees that the first one has the rake, and the second one grabs the rake. Another one grabs her leg... And then she starts putting the leaves in the bucket. Well, then they think, well, that that bucket looks cool. So they start climbing in the bucket. And then the one doesn't want the other one to climb in the bucket, pulls that one out of the bucket and jumps in the bucket. She finally gives up and just moves the leaves where they can't get to and does it herself. Now, if we're not careful, we're like those pandas. We're so worried about a lack in our lives or not having something that our focus becomes on, I got to get fill in the blank. I'm not going to be happy unless I get whatever. Attention. Stuff. By the way, I found out the guitarist from Journey, I think it was 150 guitars he bought during the pandemic. That, that to me is somebody trying to say, how can I be happy? Maybe another guitar. 150. But yet, some of you here collect things, right? And you think, just the next thing. For some of you, maybe it's somebody saying good job. For some of you, maybe it's as simple as getting promoted at work. But whatever it is, be careful that you're not constantly saying, I need more or I won't be happy. I will never be content because here's the truth about those kind of things. You're chasing the wind. Solomon said, you're just chasing the wind when you're going after stuff. When you're going after fulfillment that way, you're just chasing the wind. I, uh, listen to what it says in James 3, 14 to 16. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart, don't boast about it or deny the truth. Okay, I want to stop there for a second. So this idea of bitter envy, you know what this is? You can probably see what I got here, so maybe you can figure it out. That's a tent stake. They never used to look like this. Do you remember the big yellow ugly ones? Somebody probably sued them. Right? So so here's the thing. Tent stake, right? So what happens when you put a tent stake? Hopefully your your tent stays there. 
Now, they've gotten really creative with bouncy houses now. Have you ever watched them put a bouncy house in lately? Because after 400 videos of kids flying through the park and down the beach came out, they thought, we probably ought to attach these to the ground. And they started putting these huge spiraling stakes down in the ground to hold down the children. I don't know why. I mean, it looks like fun. So just stay in it, right? When you stake something down, what happens? You're now attached to that. When it comes to mine, me, with jealousy, looking at other people and saying, I want what they got, you can't celebrate other people's victories because you're so busy going, I should have had that. And you get staked to that. And that's what this word means. In the Greek, this idea of bitter envy is the idea of putting a stake down. You are stuck to paying attention. Oh, I can't believe they got that. I can't believe they got that. And any time you're in that, you can't focus on God. You're so busy thinking, I don't have that. When's the last time you were really happy that somebody got a new car? When's the last time you were really happy that somebody at your work got a promotion and you didn't have to do that? Ah, good for you. Man, I work so much harder than they do, right? So it says, and then don't boast about it or deny the truth. I love that. You know what Paul's saying here? He's like, well, first of all, don't brag about being arrogant and self-centered and selfish. But if you do, just be honest about it. Hey, I struggle with that. It's okay to say, I struggle with that. By the way, everybody struggles with something here. You may do great at 100 things. And then I tell a car store, and you go, oh, well, I don't struggle with that one. Yeah, but I saw you in line at Publix. I saw one of you run a traffic light this morning in front of me. Just so you know, you didn't know you ran it. All right, here we go. I, it was funny. This person, like, yanked out in front of me and then went slow, and I thought, I hope they're not, oh, they are going to our church today. <laughs> right? But we all struggle with something, right? And sometimes we don't even know it. We don't know we're struggling. Your spouse knows you're struggling. Yeah, they'll tell you sometimes. Sometimes they won't tell you because it's too much work. Don't boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom doesn't come from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual. But he goes beyond that, demonic. Why? Because when you're jealous of people, you don't work with them. You attack them. That's exactly what the enemy wants. He wants this in churches. He, he, I heard a pastor last week. I got to listen to a sermon one of my friends, and he was talking about how he worked at a church. And the pastor, he was associate, the pastor became jealous of him and began attacking him. Instead of working with him, he attacked the very person who was there for him. And that happens in our families. It happens with some of us with our, with our own brothers or sisters, right? And sometimes our Christian brothers or sisters. And then it continues. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find what? Disorder and every evil practice. See, we think the more we gather more stuff, the better off we are. By the way, this is not a backpack I would take on the Appalachian Trail. One of our ladies is getting ready to do the Appalachian Trail, and one of the questions she keeps asking is, how little can I take with me? But if we're honest, some of us keep gathering more and more and think somehow that's going to make us happy. Can I tell you that some of you are exhausted because you're so busy trying to fulfill your life with me and mine and jealousy and anger and division. It's a real easy thing to slip into. If you have, can I tell you what Paul says to do? Just be honest with God about it. Let me give you two questions. Am I constantly thinking about my wants? I'm not talking about needs. Listen, by the way, how many of you have ever said you're starving? Anybody ever say you're starving? How many of you now realize I lied when I said that, right? Okay, right? Because we're not, we're not. But we sometimes think we need something that when the truth is we just want something. Let's just be honest about our words. Hey, hey, I want that. Do you need it? I don't need that. Am I constantly comparing myself to others? Billy Graham used to say, if we're not careful, we will compare our strengths, or excuse me, our weaknesses to other people's strengths. So then we'll feel terrible about ourselves. Oh, I'm nothing. I'm just a worm. Or, even worse, I think, we will compare our strengths to other people's weaknesses. And then we'll go around going, well, they're just an idiot. Did you see what they posted on Facebook? I couldn't even believe that. By the way, if that's your thought on Facebook all the time, it might be time for you to get off Facebook. If you start thinking your friends are idiots and you're smart, it might be you. Just saying. All right. Scarcity mentality. People with a scarcity mentality tend to see everything in terms of win-lose. There's only so much, and if someone else has it, it means there'll be less for me. 
the more principled-centered we become, and I would say the more God-focused we become, the more we develop an abundance mentality, the more we're genuinely happy for the success, well-being, achievements, recognition, and good fortune of other people. We believe their success adds to rather than detracts from our lives. Think of Saul and David. David, Saul tried to kill David like at least three different times with a spear. I don't know how bad your boss is. But I'm guessing most of you have not had a spear thrown at you. Anybody? Anybody? Carl, maybe. But other people, right? So, right? And, and yet David still supported him. David had a time, several times, where he could have killed him and didn't. Think about this. What if Saul had decided to work with David? But instead he was so jealous of David. When David took out Goliath, Saul was hiding and instead of celebrating what David did, he became jealous of him. So instead of being able to work with him, he worked against him. And what happened? It destroyed Saul. If you're jealous of somebody, can I tell you, you're not destroying them. If you're bitter against somebody right now, you're not destroying them. It's you. Just be honest with God about it. Number two, me. Give me what I like. Give me what I prefer, our preferences. We live in a comfortable society. Don't you dare take dad's chair. How many of your dads had a chair? Right? Right? I have a chair. I actually this week came out and said, you're not sitting in my chair, are you? I'm going to buy a separate chair with electric shock thing on it that I can just push a button. <laughs> right? Right? Because it's our chair, my stuff. And I realize how easy it is to slip into, without even meaning to, me, my. I like this, I don't like this. And you can tell when a church is dying, when they're more concerned about their preferences. You hear more, oh, I like this, I don't like this. I like this, I don't like this. Instead of, how can we serve the community? Listen to these verses. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset, which means to reign in your mind as Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Don't you think Jesus had a couple of times with the disciples wanted to just be like, okay, just kill him just for a minute. Just do. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I mean, don't you think he, I mean, I'm sure, right? And then it says he didn't, but he didn't use it. He made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And then he said, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. And then it says, therefore, God exalted him to the highest place, gave him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And here's what the deal is for us. If you're constantly trying to exalt you, if you're constantly trying to exalt your needs, if you constantly think that your opinions and preferences are better than everybody else's, then you can't love the people around you. You, you can't be standing by your chair going, if my kid doesn't get out, I'm just going to get mad. And love them at the same time. Now, I'm not saying to let your kids walk all over you. I'm not saying to not you know, have boundaries at work. We need to have boundaries. That's healthy, okay? But the truth is, for some of us, we are busy, so busy fighting over our preferences that we think we're superior to other people and we can't love them and we can't care about them. We can't share our toys because we're so busy fighting for mine and me. One of the things I love is our new surf ministry here. Our surf ministry director is back here. You guys say hi. And uh, so, the, you know, it's wonderful. They came to me and said, hey, we got an idea for a ministry. And I said, great. What are we doing? <laughs> and they told me about it. And they've already had uh, two different surf lessons on a Saturday. I had a bunch of kids show up. It's great. First time, just a couple. And then a bunch of kids this last time. I think you guys didn't know what to do with that many. And, and here's the truth. What'd they do? They said, hey, God, how have you gifted me? And how can I bless others with it? Too many times we're waiting for somebody to beg us or to give us a golden invitation or maybe we helped one time and they didn't acknowledge me and my... You know how many times as a pastor I could quit? Right? You know, they didn't whatever, right? Why? Because the enemy does that. Why? Because he don't want you to help. So here's my question for you. When's the last time you used the gifts God's given you to bless somebody else? 
When's the last time you were uncomfortable because you did something outside of yourself? And if you can't answer that question, <laughs> Amy Sue would love to talk to you about being part of the presentation team right after the service. Right? There's all kind of opportunities in the church, but here's the deal. You don't have to wait for the church. We've got people who open their home to families in their neighborhood and go out of their way to be a blessing. When's the last time you went out of your way to bless a neighbor? When's the last time you went out of your way to bless somebody at work? If you can't answer that question, me, mine, is what you've been thinking about. And when you do that, the demons win. And your demons too, not just the demons. I'm talking about you find yourself more self-centered, more selfish, grumpier. So here's, here's two questions. Is my focus always on personal satisfaction? In America, we worship entertainment. It's one of the reasons that some churches are growing. It has nothing to do with God. They love entertainment. And I hope that you love our service. We want to make it wonderful, but we want to make it a place of worship. If God's not here, we don't want to be here either. Number two, do I sacrifice relationships for preference? Am I so busy giving my opinion that I don't care about people anymore? Do I care more about my political party than other people who are on their way to hell. I worry about in the church today. I worry that we're more concerned with the news we watched last week than we are about the neighbor next door. And we will give them our preference rather than tell them how good Jesus is. So let's go to number three. Him. What does God want me to do? Anybody in here ever play golf? Putt-putt golf? Any golf? All right. So putt-putt golf, what's the whole thing? They put things to distract you, right? They got a windmill. Everybody's got a windmill. Why is that? I don't know. But everybody's got a windmill, right? And they're trying to distract you. You won't know when to hit it. There's like this much space between each one. And what happens inevitably every time? You hit the dumb thing anyway. I mean, you got a one in four million chance, and you whack the thing. And if you play real golf, they put a water hazard there. And so you think, don't hit the water, don't hit the water, don't hit the water. And what happens? You either whack it right to the water or you shank it away from the water. Very rarely hit it. And watch a pro golf tournament. They do the same thing. These guys, that's all they do. They play golf for a living. Awesome. And they do the same thing I do when they get to that hole. And I think, I could do that. Can I just play that hole for them and get that percentage of their income? Okay. Okay. Submit yourselves, James said, to God, then resist the devil, and he will flee from you. What's the devil trying to do? Me, my, me, my, mine, mine, me. Like the birds in Dory, right? Me, mine, mine, me, mine, right? Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Come near to God, and he'll come near to you. You know who moved, right, if God's not close? Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Basically, pay attention to when you become selfish and self-centered and grieve about it. But listen to this. Change your laughter to mourning, your joy to gloom. And then it says this. Humble yourself before the Lord. And what happens? He will lift you up. The whole Christian life can be summarized in one word. You want to hear it? Surrender. God, I surrender. I surrender my wants to you. I surrender my desires to you. You know what else is good? When you have a lack, because every once in a while we have a lack in our life, something we need. Maybe your car breaks down on the way to work, right? And that's when you have an opportunity to go, okay, God, I'm going to trust you to take care of me. Now, I'm going to be active in this. It doesn't mean I'm not going to call a mechanic. You know, I'm not just going to pray over my car. Lord, heal that belt that just broke. You know, quit filling up my car with gas, but I prayed over it, okay? That's not, you know... There's a, there's a balance here. But the truth is, are you going to trust God when it doesn't go right? Or are you going to focus on me and mine? And the tendency when we're hurt, when we're struggling, is to focus on mine and me. But listen to what it says in Matthew 6, 33. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Do you want to be a better husband? Be a better wife? Seek first his kingdom. You want to be a better worker, employee? Seek first his kingdom. You want to be better to your neighbors, that one neighbor that you really struggle with? Seek first his kingdom. God, I don't know how to deal with that. Would you give me wisdom as I deal with that? And he says, if we will seek him first. Now, let me tell you what seek him first looks like. They did a study this week 
and they did it years ago, of what people do first thing in the morning. It used to be go to the bathroom. Did you know that? Isn't that exciting to know? You know what it is now? Look at my phone. And most of it has to do with check social media or the news. I want to encourage you. If you look at my phone, the Bible app is front and center on the first thing of my Bible app, of my phone. So when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is see, I want to seek God first. Before I find out what's going on in the news, before the weather forecasters this week tell me a hurricane's coming, we're all going to die, or the newest plague is here, or whatever else they're going to tell us, right? Has anybody died of this worldwide plague? No. Uh, okay, right? And so you're supposed to be, but you're supposed to be afraid. So do I want to focus on that? No, no. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness first. And then everything else will come together. What are you seeking first? Have you lost your joy? Here's two final questions. How often do I seek God first? And how often do I give up comfort for obedience? If you haven't given up your own comfort, your own satisfaction in order to obey God lately, you're not listening. The Christian life is always about surrender. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you can do that today. That's the first surrender is, Jesus, <laughs> I'm making a mess out of my life. I'm a sinner. I surrender to you knowing that Jesus died on a cross and rose for me. And I want to surrender my life to you. And when you do that, the Bible says, you don't even live this Christian life on your own. You seek him first. Why? Because his spirit comes to live in you to give you the power to do these very things. In my own flesh, I'm selfish and self-centered. But with his power. I can love and care for others. I can even be a friend, a real friend. I don't even need a robot friend. If you want to talk to that me about that after the service, I'd be glad to. Normally, we have our time of offering here. You can give on your way out. You can give online. But I want to thank you guys for coming this morning. Let's close in prayer. Father, thank you for this time this morning. Bless each one here. Father, may we walk in your presence seeking you first. Lord, I pray on those days where that stake is put down in our lives and it's put down in selfishness and self-centeredness that you, through your Holy Spirit, just like that physical therapist, would get us up and get us refocused on you and your kingdom. May we walk in your power today. In Jesus' name, amen.